What's up everyone? Grant with Main Street Mowers here at our second location in beautiful Claremont, Florida. Today we're going to be talking about a piece of equipment many of you may already own or you're in the process of considering purchasing and that's going to be your trailer. Today we're going to go over a few tips for you on purchasing the right trailer, how to hook it up, how to load it, and how to maintain it. It's everything you need to know about trailers on this episode of Main Street Mower. Like I said in the intro, everybody, today's video is all about trailers. We carry everything from a 4x8 all the way up to a large gooseneck, any of which can be ordered. All you have to do is give us a call to check our inventory. We always keep a pretty good selection in stock, so we're definitely going to have something you need, and if not, we can definitely get it for you. Today we're going to be going over a couple of the basics, like I said, how to hook up the trailer, how to load the trailer properly, and how to check the trailer before you leave. For today's demonstrations, we're going to be using this Big Tex 10ET equipment trailer. This trailer comes with two 5,000 pound axles and trailer brakes. First things first, let's show you how to hook it up to the truck. So the first step in hooking up a trailer is the actual hooking up the trailer. Watch out for that first step, it's a doozy. <laughs> For this, we're going to be backing on to our 10ET with this Ford F-150. Now, if you're new to hooking up a trailer by yourself, don't be upset if it takes you a couple of tries. It took me a while too. This can be a little daunting when you're doing it by yourself. If you have a backup camera installed in your tow vehicle, now is an opportune time to use it. Or if you have a buddy that's willing to help you, that's not a bad option either. Now let's go ahead and get hooked up. All right guys, now that we've already got the truck backed under the trailer, one thing we did forget to go over really quick before we backed on is talking about trailer ball coupler size. This trailer uses a two and five sixteenths ball. Anytime you're uncertain of what size trailer ball your trailer uses, it's printed right on the coupler. On some of your big techs and triple crown products, they will be kind enough to put a decal up here on the original jack handle for you, indicating the coupler ball size that you need to pull this trailer. Our truck already has the two and five sixteenths ball that this trailer requires, so we're good to go ahead and lower it down onto the trailer. So once all the weight of the trailer has been transferred to the ball and off the jack, we're gonna move down here. Our coupler slid on for us. Normally, on this particular trailer, this pin swings outwards, allowing the ball to drop in. The arm swings back in and encloses the ball. The coupler slides forward, ensuring that this can't open during transit. And to ensure the coupler cannot slide back, you install the safety pin. Once the safety pin has been installed, the next thing we're going to start with is going to be our lights. Trailers usually come with one of two types of trailer connectors. It's either going to be a flat four connector or a seven pin like this. Most of your seven pin connectors will usually be on trailers that are equipped with electronic trailer brakes. Most of your modern vehicles equipped with a tow package will have the connector for both the four and the seven pin adapter, usually located under the bumper near the receiver hitch. On this truck, your seven and four pin adapters are to the left of your receiver hitch. Also on your seven pin connector, you have a raised edge. This slides into a raised edge in your trailer hitch. Once it's pushed in, there's a tab on the back of the door that is spring-loaded that will keep the light plug installed. Moving forward, we're going to be installing our safety chains. In the state of Florida, it is required that your safety chains be crossed under the tongue of the trailer. Make sure you check with your local law enforcement to make sure that that's correct for the area you live in. The last thing we're going to be installing going to be our electronic trailer breakaway. 
This cable is connected to a box. If the pin is pulled out of the box, it will automatically trigger the trailer brakes and bring the trailer to a stop in the event of a trailer disconnect from the tow vehicle. This is not allowed to be hooked directly to your safety chains per the state of Florida. Again, make sure you check and see what the laws are in your area. For our vehicle, we'll install this the same place we installed the safety chains on the safety chain eyelet on the back of the truck. If your safety chain cable is too long, Main Street Mowers does sell a <clears throat> extendable so that you don't have excess dragging the ground, but it'll still reach safely from your trailer to your tow vehicle. Now that we've got our connections made at the truck, let's move to the back and check our lights. So now we're gonna start by checking the lights on the vehicle. We're gonna start with our left turn signal, and then move to our right turn signal. And then last, we're going to turn on the brake lights. Also, if your trailer is equipped with side marker lights, usually either yellow or red, you will wanna definitely walk around and make sure that those are activating as needed. If all your lights are good, we're ready to proceed to the next step. If not, definitely get them checked. And remember, Main Street Mowers can definitely help you with that. All right, so now that we've got our lights checked, the next thing we're gonna do is check our tire pressure and our wheel bearings. Follow me. All right, everybody, so we're back here. We're gonna check the tire pressure on our trailer. First thing you'll wanna do is check and see what the max sidewall pressure on the trailer tire is. Make sure not to exceed that. On our trailer, it's 65 PSI, but always follow the label located near the tongue of the trailer for the correct tire pressure for the trailer you own. So what we're gonna do, pull this off, turn on our tire gauge, 65.1. So we are right where we need to be. Also really quick while you're down here, just check the overall condition of your tire. Make sure there's no dry rot, make sure you have adequate tread, and make sure that your tires are not more than four years old. On the side of the trailer tire, you'll have a DOT number. The last two digits in the four digit code is the year the tire was produced. Anything over four years old should be replaced as it becomes a safety hazard. So once you check your first tire, make sure you check all the rest of the tires on your trailer. Moving forward, the next thing you're going to want to check is going to be your wheel bearings. If you'd like to learn how to do that, check them, repack them, and more information, we have a video up here for your enjoyment. Now that we've been over all the important things you need to check on your trailer before you load it, let's get to the fun part, loading the dingo. All right guys, we're on to the next section, loading something on the trailer. Check this out. This is a Toro TX1000 wide track Dingo. This unit with no implements on it weighs roughly two tons. Our truck and trailer will be more than up to the task of handling this. So we're gonna show you how to properly and improperly put it on the trailer. Here we go. We do not park here. Nope, not here either. Right here is exactly where you want it. If you have it too far forward on the trailer, you put excessive weight on the tongue of the tow vehicle, causing extra weight over the drive wheels. This extra weight will take weight off the steer tires of the vehicle, causing a loss of steering and braking, and potentially leading to an accident. You don't want it too far behind the axles on the trailer either, because this will again cause a reverse reaction. It will take too much weight off the drive wheels, causing the trailer to swing out uncontrollably, and again, potentially lead to a wreck. Right in the center is where, about where you wanna be. The easiest way to tell if you've got it loaded correctly is to look at your tow vehicle. You want your tow vehicle to sit roughly level. A lot of your newer pickup trucks and SUVs will have a natural higher rear end to them so that they can accommodate weight from a trailer. They're intended to naturally sit level once loaded. So as long as you're sitting level on your tow vehicle, you're good to go. Speaking of good to go, let's get this thing tied down. All right, everybody, let's talk straps. First thing you wanna make sure of is that your straps are in good shape and rated for the load you're planning to put on them. 
The straps we have on our dingo are rated for about 3,300 pounds a piece, so they will be more than enough to hold that dingo in place going down the road. Always make sure you check the laws local to you to make sure that you're not in violation. Also, always make sure that you tie up or bundle up any loose ends of your strap that you have. Also make sure that your anchor points on both the load you're securing and the trailer are good and they're not going to fail on you. Everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That helps the channel grow. Make sure you drop us a comment with anything in the video you liked, you didn't like, or anything you'd like to see us talk about in the future. We'd love to be your neighborhood mower shop. We have three locations to serve you. Winter Garden, Claremont, and Ocala. We carry everything here from self-propelled push mowers all the way up to dingoes. Give us a call, check out our Facebook page. We'd love to help you out. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Have a great day. I'm off. Till next time.